Last time on Good Neighbors. In the sleepy seaside town of Constance, Louisiana, a local high school student named Jude Keaton has been kidnapped, seemingly sucked into a vending machine in the middle of the night, seen only by an unknown figure who tells no one. The down-on-his-luck con man Cassius Montgomery pulls a grift at the local flea market, but is ultimately on the run again as his plans fall apart. Tipped off that there's a reward for Jude Keaton's safe return, Cassius has some decisions to make while he hides in a nearby diner. The local doomsayer Flint O'Hare tries yet again to warn the people of Constance of the danger they're in, but is harassed by the local authorities to cease. Given a hefty fine for disturbing the peace, Flint happens upon the mother of Jude, who offers to pay him for his help. Noble as ever, he declines the money and begins his search anyway. A strange, unearthly man named James Pale arrives at the same flea market, accompanied by his protege, June Traherne. Patiently, he prods them to pick up signs of the supernatural, and ultimately tasks them with tracking down the missing student. Following the signs, June lays a clever trap for a nearby creature. The plucky cultist, Beck Tui, is pulled away from her everyday life of gaming by a call to arms from her monster-hunting sect. Their leader, Grandmaster Chuck Hayes, is wary of the presence of a creature who may be behind the recent kidnappings. The sect is tasked with reconnaissance, but young Beck may be getting a little ahead of the plan. two of you uh, uh, pick up running as you follow down these sort of magically placed out tracks you can see the the city street where Jude had been running as he moved from uh, spot to spot uh, his there was you know the clear signs of he thought he was getting attacked by something fell down started running he stopped tried to take a breath started running uh, and as you you follow his tracks along with the, the the monster's clips, you can see that the monster goes into like a house door, like it'll divert, go into like a cellar or a mailbox or something, and stops following. And then its tracks appear again later. You come to an old gas station where its neon sign has burst. You can see glass along the floor, and you can see that some janitors have tried to make a, a haphazard attempt at cleaning up. You can see that the vending machine, which once sold snacks and sodas and things, is broken. What do you do? I'd like to uh, walk over to the vending machine and look for any signs of non-regular vandalism. Uh, snacks being ripped open with a almost animalistic... Uh, Think like uh, raccoons trying to steal your uh, food, like. Sure. Go ahead and give me an investigative mystery. All right. That is going to be only a seven. Uh, seven. That's not nothing. That's hold one. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What is going? What was it going to do? What is being concealed here? What is being concealed here? Excellent. As you uh, look across, like, the wreckage, you can see that a number of, like, chips and, and cracked sodas and things have been spewed outwards, uh, as if they've been, like, thrown. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, they've been done so one by one. They don't look like they were, like, part of a blast or something. There's no sign that, like, the inside of the vending machine exploded. You can see uh, a little bit of blood on the inside uh, from, like a, like, a scrape as part of the, the glass and metal is jagged. You can see that what is being concealed here is that uh, this creature holds Jude inside and then someone else tried to save them and thought maybe digging through the wreckage here there might be a way to do so, and they didn't. Hey, uh, kid, uh, nunchuck fighter person. Yeah? Uh, it looks like somebody else was already looking for Jude, uh... 
but didn't manage to rescue them. Seems like the vending machine ate them. The vending machine ate them. Yeah. Right? You think this person was around, like, recently? Kid only went missing, like, last night. Uh, I'm just gonna point out the, uh, blood to back. Oh, okay. Well, that's not completely dry. Nah, it's just a little bit, but, uh... It's something to go off of. So, suppose we gotta find a way inside? Uh, I'm just going to try climbing into the vending machine. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you straight up, no roll necessary. You can do that and nothing happens. Oh, uh, uh, but I meant maybe we should go inside the gas station, but if you want to investigate the vending machine, I'll spot you. As you are uh, sitting there in the, the vending machine, the uh, back end of it uh, sparks and there is a slight tick and the inside of it sparks again uh, and some of the components catch a tiny fire uh, I think I need to get out of this thing you do it's not hard <laughs> <laughs> um it catches larger fire as you sit there waiting it sparks again, and the wall outlet to which it is attached sparks, and an electrical fire starts there as well. Is the fire spreading toward the gas station? I mean, it's the building is the gas station, so the, the building that is the gas station is on fire, but it doesn't look like it's going towards the gas pumps, but it might. Right. It doesn't move that fast yet. Is there, like, a TV or anything inside the gas station? Yeah. Like a security camera TV, yeah. I'm gonna look at the TV. Is anything playing on it currently? No. It's shut off. Is there anyone in the gas station? Can we, like, see? They are. They're fussing with the TV. Gosh. They're like, what the hell? Uh, it's not, like, a crime to, like, report a fire. So I'm gonna, uh, go inside and, and tell them that, like, you know, there's been a, a malfunction and that the, the vending machine caught flame. They, uh, get on the, the, the phone that is attached to the, 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 the catch register and they dial in a number, uh, through, you know, that classic circular number dialing thing, and they tell you pretty immediately the lines are dead. Okay, uh, we need a haul ass. You hear an explosion outside. As you are sitting there inside the gas station, the vending machine has blasted off its, off its side and is now crackling in fire. We need to go, this is an electrical fire, uh... I'm not sure if the electrical fire shorted your, uh, your building or what, but, uh, you should probably get out of the area to avoid risking harm. I don't think you need to, they're like a retail worker, they're not going to stay and get fire for their job. Yeah. Uh, and they, they run out of the building, and as, uh, you all, uh, get out, you can see that across the street there is, like, a residential area, and there is a, a, a man parked outside. Uh, who is shouting and, like, knocking on, like, throwing rocks at doors and saying, Get out! Fire! Get out! And, you know, he's, like, directing, like, pointing, like, run away from the gas station. Mm -hmm. And he's got, he's got, like, a, like, an old mobile 1961 Vista Cruiser outside. It's, like, got the wooden belt and everything. Does it look like someone I'd recognize? Uh, sure. Uh, this is a popular figure around town. This is the, the, the horror writer that lives in town. His name is Dr. Emmett Garcia Chalamet. And he's ahead of you, telling everyone to get out of the area. I would like to assist him in this. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think this is... I don't think this is a role required. There's things on fire and something just exploded. He turns to you and uh, uh, Dr. Garcia is like an uh, early 60s bearded fellow with like tired eyes and wears a complete tweed suit uh, like, with elbow pads and everything. Uh, and he turns to you and he says, uh, uh, what, what are you doing? Get out of here. It's dangerous. Yeah, I'm getting people out of here also. The gas station attendant was in the gas station when the fire started. Well, now it's time to go. I'll follow you. I can assure you that's not wise. And uh, as you're, you're talking, you can see inside, because the gas station is largely glass, the TV booms inwards. I can assure you wisdom is not my uh, strong suit. 
he's he's clearly <laughs> desperate uh, as he's looking around. Beck, what are you doing at this time? Uh, I think Beck uh you know, like tried to make sure that no one else was in the gas station. Uh, and if it if it was empty, like no one was like in a bathroom or anything, uh, would run out uh with Flint. Okay, yeah, uh, it, it is. Everyone evacuates pretty quickly when someone says the yeah, thing's on a fire. fire. Doctor uh, Garcia has has like pulled out his phone and clearly isn't working. Uh, and he he says, "Fine." You and I both okay. knew the phone wasn't going to work right now. He gives you like a long stare. Says, "Okay, get in the car," and he gets in his driver's seat. I get in the passenger seat. Uh, you coming, badass? Uh, well, I suppose so. What with the flattery and all, uh, and and Beck will also get inside the car. Sitting on the back seat of the car is a shotgun, uh, alongside a, a small bag of various medical supplies, uh, and uh, emergency goods like a fire extinguisher and the like. And he kicks off as soon as he sees people in their houses moving away from the building, uh, and he starts driving down the road. And he says, uh, in like the rearview mirror, looking at you, well, both of you, saying, "I am putting a lot of trust in you here." And behind you, the gas station explodes. In the distance, from a streetcar far away, Cassius Montgomery, you can see and hear the boom. It's quite a distance away from where you are now, as the streetcar is cycling back towards the uh, community center. You've gotten a little ways away, and a little bit of time has passed, and the news all around has switched specifically to that because it's the most important thing that's going on right now. As you are sitting there reading, you can see your car as you pass by the parking lot of the community center. You see a little tiny face looking at you from the back seat. It's small and from this distance, you can't make out any fine details, but you know what it is. It wasn't in your car before. It's there now. From this distance, you're not quite sure what it's specifically looking at, but it's looking at something through the glass. The car stops as it grinds to a halt, and you can hear emergency services forcing it to pull over so that it can make its way towards the uh, the fire way down the roads. What are you doing at this time? Are they opening the doors? Uh, yeah, you can see that people are, are, are filtering out. Alright, I'm gonna run out the bus down the steps and try to as casually as I can walk towards my car to see what the fuck is in there. Alright. As you uh, uh, go up to the window on the back part of your car you see a doll it's row it's clothes made out of rope tied in rows around its body you see little figures drawn on its sides you see ratty hair and beady little eyes looking at you is <laughs> is my car door open it is now Has the streetcar pulled away yet? Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna reach out my- I'm gonna open my car door, grab the doll, and turn it, just throw it as far as I can, and walk briskly back towards the community center. The doll <laughs> flings away, and it doesn't resist you or anything, uh, but you feel <laughs> like it didn't- yeah. Yeah. This has happened before. And as you walk briskly towards the community center, get away. you hear a, a low grumble, and a pipe bursts on, th on the side of the building. And you can see that a bit of water is gushing out. What do you do? Uh, uh, uh does it... Well, um... Is it, like, in my way to get into the community center? Sort of. Your feet would get wet crossing over it, but a pipe has burst. 
And that's usually a bad sign. Well, that's weird. Um, strange. I'm going to go into the community center because I need my keys. Absolutely. As you uh, uh, get back in and try to like slyly dart your way along, are you doing anything to kind of disguise yourself from before? Uh, I think he... I think um, I'm going to leave my suit jacket in the car and just keep my hat pulled low over my eyes and just walk briskly. Okay, I want you to act under pressure to avoid being noticed. <laughs> we'll see! Uh, 11. 11. You do exactly what you set out to do. As people are, are clearly having their attention on, oh my god, there was an explosion downtown, uh, you're able to uh, deftly ignore their, or avoid their attention. Uh, as you do so, uh, you can go back to the singular places in which you uh, uh, had passed by in order to, you know, get through this place and set up a stall and things, places where you might have been pickpocketed. And yep. there's seemingly nothing. What are you doing? Can I read a bad situation? Absolutely. Uh, that will be a nine. Nine. Uh, hold one. What's my best way in? What's my best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's the biggest threat? What's most vulnerable to me? What's the best way to protect the victims? Are there any dangers I haven't noticed? For sure. As you are... Uh, uh, looking about, and uh, as as whenever the doll shows up in your life, things are wrong. You know to be on the lookout for things that aren't right with the world. And as you peer about, you can feel your nerves kick in sufficiently. You can see no keys, no keys, little jingle. Someone has a gun. Someone has little scratches on their back. Someone's bleeding, but they're not doing anything about it. Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? There's a monster in the area. It's nearby. Your best bet is that this thing has been stealing from people. Any dangers we haven't noticed? The monster has your keys. Oh god, do I know how to follow it in any way? How- what would you do about doing? I mean, how would uh, you about it? Could I investigate a mystery to try to track- like seeing if I can see where those scratches and like- sure. Things that are amiss leads to. Mm -hmm. Nine. Hold one. I assume it's where did it go? Yeah. For sure. You uh, follow mysterious tracks as you see uh, a couple spiders making their way downstairs. Oh, God. Uh, it's as if someone dropped a jar a second ago, or maybe they. There was just like a, an inordinate number of them in a tiny area that have been making their way around. You can see little scratches bound and leap, and the door has creaked open. It's still open. Something was in there, and it's downstairs in the boiler room. And you hear, Release me! Oh. As, Sarah, what was your glitch? I'm going to assume the most narratively logical one would be unwanted attention. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, as it is now loud and boisterous, uh, people inside beyond Cassius can also hear RELEASE ME! As the thing spews bits of water from its mouth and spittle covers the ground a little bit. A pipe in the room bursts and steam gets a little thicker. June, what do you do? Um. Hey, dude. Uh, look. If I wanted to hurt you, I could. You're kind of in no place to make demands. I just need you to tell me where the fuck uh, Jude is, and then like you can go or whatever. Uh it, it struggles against the sort of sap-like encasing that it's in, as if it was trapped in some rubber cement, and it scrapes along and starts pulling it free. Your earlier effect was just a short duration. You have about a minute before this thing gets out. And it says, Jude. And Cassius, you can hear this from the top of the stairs. Yeah, the missing kid. Hmm. 
mother's sweet little boy. Hmm? Well, that was creepy as fuck. Man, can you just- It's again on the ground. Has anyone noticed anything? Like, do people- There are people like- Yeah, I think there are a couple people that are like, Hey, man, she really shouldn't be going down there. But no one's noticed the sound? I think they have, a little bit. And there are a couple people that are going to come close, and I think you can tell someone else is probably going to come down there in a little bit if you don't. Gotcha. Uh, As they approach, I just want to go, Oh, excuse me, um- Sorry, we're actually filming a scene down there. Uh, if you could just stay away, you'd really you'd ruin oh, really- the sound. Uh, I'm sorry, it's it's really bad. It's actually it, um, Jake Gyllenhaal's actually attached to the project. If you wanted to know, um, he's not here today. He's not on set. But yeah, if you could just please keep the noise down and stay out of the basement for a while. Roll me a manipulated person. Please, please. <laughs> That's a ten. Ten. Uh, they'll do it for the reason you gave them. Uh, the person's like, oh shit, that's so cool. I haven't heard of Jake Gyllenhaal doing anything in years. I know, uh, right? We, <laughs> we got him, though. We got him. <laughs> and they, they like, they high-five you, like, well done. Thank uh, you. <laughs> and they, they depart, and the, uh, a person who works at the, the center is like, should we put up a sign? Oh my gosh, I didn't know. How, no one ever tells me anything. No, it's totally, it's totally understandable. It's really last minute. If you could put up a sign, that'd be great. I actually have to go down there and check on the craft services because they are late. But um, yeah, if you could put up a sign, that'd be fantastic. Okay, got it. And they, they head off to go put a sign up. Gotcha. I'm going to creep down the stairs with my hand on my pistol. Very nice. Well, June, what are you doing? Look, man, this is like your last chance before things get... I don't know, rough, like, tell me where the damn kid is, or I'm gonna have to get, I don't know, mean? Uh, investigate a mystery. Yeah, this is a new avenue for which you can, you can ask questions and that you can talk to this creature, so. Alright. And I will, of course, answer as the creature. Eight. Hold one, what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What is being concealed here? Um, I guess what is being concealed here, because I'm asking where the kid is, and that's what he's keeping a secret, so. Sure. Uh, it, it, like, growls low as it releases itself slowly from its bindings like a silkworm from its cocoon. And it says, <clears throat> Mama's taking good care of him. Don't worry, he's alive. For now. He's being well cared for with little toys and soups, and all in good comfort. And it, it pulls out from like a marsupial-esque sack, the little toys that it's been stealing. Uh, what is being concealed here? Uh, the monster is caring for Jude like it's a, like Jude's a kid that it has. Yeah, that's creepy as fuck. Don't love that. Um, What's creepy about love? Yeah, it's not your kid. Not friend. Uh, uh, Cassius, as you descend the stairs, you can peer around the corner and see this small scene coming on. What do uh, I? What do I see of this creature? Uh, you see less because you don't have magical eyes right now. True. Uh, so you see twenty like, twenty this- though. <laughs> uh, but magic is visible to the to the human eye. So what you see uh, is this sort of like resin slop that is uh, uh, kind of moving off the ground and shifting. Uh, so some in- invisible creature is is underneath this goo, uh, and it is, as it is shifting around, and as you've been catching on to more of it, you can see like the scrapes of little claws, and you can see uh, little drips of uh, some kind of water on the ground. You can see a tiny, uh, shadowy eye in the puddle, uh, as you can see little blood droplets open up and plume in the water. Um, I'm gonna say, last chance, Schmeagel. Give me a straight answer, or you're not gonna like what happens. It lunges at you. I I think, uh, uh, now that it's free of its binding, I think it's time to kick some ass. I'm terrible at that. Is is there a way that I could use let's get out of here to protect someone by telling them what to do or by leading them out and shout to jump out of the way uh yeah yeah absolutely go ahead and uh what what does that move what does that say 
Uh, basically, I can use if I can use protect someone by telling them what to do or by leading them out. I can roll charm instead of tough. Okay, absolutely. I think it's probably less of jump out of the way because that seems like the obvious thing to do, and more of the creature now knowing, oh, there's another uh, person in here, and that's enough of a distraction to throw it off its game. Gotcha. Eight. Uh, eights. Okay. Uh, protect someone on a seven plus. Protect them okay, but you'll suffer some or all of the harm they were going to get. Uh, okay. As uh, as you you shout and expose yourself, uh, 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 June, what did you roll for your kicks and ass? Um, because I have an opening, can I still roll weird instead to use a spell? Since it's not focused on me? That seems fair. Okay, cool, cool. Um... What spell are you using? Uh, I'm gonna do damage. Ah, nice. Inflict some harm. Good. Yep. Uh, that is going to be a nine again. Uh, nine. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to reach into my jacket and take out a small vial, hold it up to my nose, and snort. And I'm going to yell out, "Oh, saw Cortasis pool!" And uh, a jet of energy flies out of my hand at the creature. Fuck, I love it. Uh, and that effect is in one harm, ignore armor, magic, obvious. As the, the, the jet of energy erupts uh, from your hands, uh, uh, choose a glitch. Uh, what are my magic -y glitches? The effect Unwanted. is weakened, the effect is of short duration, you have you take one harm, ignore armor, the magic effect draws uh, immediate unwelcome attention, and it's a problematic side effect. I'll take the harm. You that know, seems fair. I, yeah, I snorted some fucking chemicals or something, I'm sure it's not good for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can feel like this uh, terrible poison you've absorbed in your body uh, uh, fuel the energy of this blast, uh, and as it does so, the, the one small uh, cellar window, uh, like, bursts open from the sheer force of, like, the wind blast. And the creature, though thick of hide and scale, you can see that parts of its body just crack open and blood leak out, and it lets out a ghastly wail. Uh, and we can see outside, people are like, man, what the hell is this movie about? <laughs> it sounds so good! Uh, the obvious tag is saved by, by a good lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> And as you, uh, 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 and at least the spell, the creature, uh, as it wails, Cassius, beside you, a pipe bursts, and the creature clearly didn't do this on its own, as hot steam slams against your face, and you take one harm, uh, as ah. it burns, ah. and kind of seeps into your, your, like, white suit. <laughs> no! At least it's steam cleaned now! <laughs> your honor! Uh, <laughs> And, uh, June, there's someone else in the room <laughs> who's now exposing themselves. Oh, fuck. Well, not. I mean, I'm fully clothed. <laughs> uh, um, so where did, is the creature taking off, or is it still attacking, uh, this stranger in here with me? Uh, it has now bounded from the wall. It, it is, right. like, no longer trapped. It is, like, rolling around the room, and its spiny tail is stabbing into the metal of these pipes and letting hot steam into the room. It's going to become real dangerous in here real fast. I think I'm going to book it for now. I think there's maybe too much attention and this creature has an edge, but I want to help this person get out of here too. Okay. As you run to the door, you hear it slam shut and you hear a little as it locks, but there's no one on the other side. It just closes. And as you slam into the side of it, the camera cuts hard away to a car, like a swerve parking outside. We see uh, uh, Beck, Flint, and Dr. Uh, Garcia hop outside of the car, and, and uh, uh, Garcia asks for a shotgun. Beck, you're in the backseat. Uh, all right, cool it there, stranger danger. Why are we in your car? Why do you have a shotgun? What's going on? Hey, Beck, uh, can you hand him a shotgun? <sighs> Uh, <laughs> Tell he, me why. Why should I? Why should I hand you a shotgun? Because there, because there is a dangerous entity on the premises. 
Because he's on the same team we are, it seems. He seems to know what's going on. There is a noticeable sigh of relief as you say same team. Uh, as he uh, clearly was like, do I have to explain this to someone? There was a noticeable fear as Beck started to question him. And as soon as you say same team, that is all gone. Uh, Beck hands him the shotgun. Uh, now, for the record, I don't know what's going on at all. But here you go. You're... And he, uh, he pauses for a moment. I have to move, I'm sorry. And he uh, runs towards the, the, the community center where we see pipes have burst outside and he uh, slams on a fire alarm that's sitting just outside the door. And as it rings, uh, he sets off uh, a set of sprinklers forcing people to start moving outside. What do you all do? I take off after him and I try to start ushering people out. Uh, Beck will also follow uh, him, uh, paying less mind to the other people, and kind of like more interested in making sure she doesn't lose sight of Garcia. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is going to continue happening for a little bit. This is going to take a minute. So, yeah. Uh, as you are, are arching people out, uh, he starts like surveying the area, uh, and he, uh, 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 like has like a little journal as he tries to like mark different signs and his it's flipping through it as best he can uh, to find... Like, it looks like he's trying to figure something out. What are y'all doing? Uh, I'm going to look for any more of those claw marks that I saw in the movie theater. Absolutely. Uh, I think this is a really bad situation. I think this is a little little more active and less investigatory. All right. Really me? bad situation is also sharp. Yep. And I got a 10. 10. Hold three. Uh, you ask each of these questions. If you act on the answer, you get a plus one ongoing while the information is relevant. What's my best way in? What's my best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's the biggest threat? What's most vulnerable to me? What's the best way to protect the victims? Dangers I haven't noticed. Best way to protect the victims and the victims in the broader sense, just like the people in general, but in the more specific sense, how to save that kid. And, uh, I said dangers I haven't noticed, and best way in. Okay. Let's go with the dangers we haven't noticed. The pipes are bursting. No, uh, goblin creature that you found in your studies ha has, like, weird environmental powers like this. So dangers you haven't noticed, if pipes are bursting, if steam is erupting, if a gas station explodes, the bigger creature that controls it is doing this. And that means it has eyes in the area. And it can do magic. I'm going to relay that information to uh, Beck and our new friend, the Doctor. He gives a, a, a solemn, I thought so. Uh, and uh, uh, what were your other two questions? How to protect the victims and best way in. Uh, how to protect the victims, the victims being the common people or you guys? The common people and if I can get more specific, that kid, but if that's not, uh... I think you gotta pick one. Uh, if, if the, uh, kid is not available, then I will go with the common people. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh the best way to, uh, uh, protect them is to, uh, these people are gonna stand just outside of this place while, you know, there's a fire alarm going off or whatever, because people are, you know, kind of silly about that sort of thing on, like, watch a spectacle, they need to, you need to get them to vacate the premises more thoroughly than just getting them wet and getting them annoyed. Uh, if you want to protect them from, like, the magic that the bigger monster has. Uh, I think you also have, have picked up on the, the little puddles of water that have been around that are not natural and in, in necessarily in color. Uh, and that is the, the way in which the bigger monster is seeing everything. So if you can either dry that up or cover those up, then you will be safe from its vision for the time being. And what's your last question? Best way in, best way out. Best way, uh, and when I say best way, I mean where I won't have to like lie my way in or something. How can I get to where the bad things are without having to bullshit my way around a security guard or something? There are two ways. You can either scale the side of the building, because this is still like an old mansion, rather than like an actual public service building. 
Uh, so you could scale up to the second floor uh, and boulder your way up and then break inside through a window. Or you can take a cellar door, or uh, not a cellar door, a cellar window, which is thin and you'll have to squeeze through it, but it is a way that no one's like manning and there's a decent chance no one will be inside when you do so. All right. Uh, in that case, I'm going to look at the doctor and then I'm going to look at Beck, relay all of this information and point out to uh, Beck specifically the two ways in or out and I'm going to tell them, listen, you look... Uh, with those nunchucks and all, you look like you might have a better chance of uh, helping whoever's in there than I would. So pick your way in and I'll follow your lead. And if you get there before me, save who you can. All right, let's 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 go through the basement. All right, uh, Doc, is there any way you could get people to... Uh, Maybe not stand so close to the building, considering, you know, ambient magic, whatever the fuck we're dealing with, looking at us through puddles and shit. Uh, I, I, I can try. Do you have any ideas? The best I got is saying, hi, I'm famous. Come talk to me. Uh, that's actually what I was going to suggest. Uh... I don't know, maybe, maybe say that, uh, you're, you're... You were gonna do a signing in there, but because of the fire alarm, uh, you're gonna do it like a block away or something. Uh, okay. Uh, he uh, seems to understand the premise of what's going on and still seems a little panicked about the situation. So I think when you provide this sort of lead, he, he's willing to go about it. Uh, give me a manipulated person uh, to get him to like not go straight for the monster. Uh, but you have a plus one ongoing because you used the rebat situation. All right, so that evens out my minus one, so it's just a straight roll. And a nine. All right, so it, it, does it come up to a 10? Is that the bit? No, uh, I'm normally at minus one with a manipulated right. person, and the plus one made it a zero, essentially, so it was a straight roll of nine. Gotcha. Beck, would you like to help out? Sure. What do you do? Uh, So this is him trying to convince Garcia to... Take care of the concealment portion while gotcha. you guys deal with a monster. Okay. Yeah, yeah, close some blinds on your way out if you can. Worst comes to worst. Just fake like a heart attack or something out on the curb. Go for it. Give me a roll. roll. On help out, you add cool. Uh, nine. All right. Uh, on a seven to nine, your help grants them plus one to the roll, but you expose yourself to trouble or danger. Uh, there isn't any in the regards that uh, he succeeds now. There is no risk here. He doesn't have to do anything. So Matt, your, uh, your manipulative person goes up to a 10. They'll do it for the reason you gave them. Uh, uh, Garcia is an older man, so the physical part of monster hunting seems a bit beyond them. They are happy to do this portion here, and they run off to the side, and like they wave their hands, and they say in a big sort of gregarious uh, uh, way, say, hello, I'm, you know, and they, they get everyone's attention, and they start to try and lead them away. All right. You see the, the cellar window burst open as a jet of air moves outside, and a strange, unknowable language erupts out of it. Nunchucks, I think that's our entrance. I'll follow you. Okay. Here we go. You charge towards the window. Uh, it is a. It would be a tight fit. Uh, as soon as you get close to it, you can see that there are two people inside. Uh, that are, are, are shouting about something, and you can see that the room is filling with steam real fast. There is a, a weird sort of <laughs> coming from the inside as well. What do you do? Uh, I want to climb through the window. All right, there's a bit of a drop. Not enough to hurt you, but enough to like stagger you for a second. Uh, as you drop into the, the boiler room, uh, Cassius and uh, June, you can hear from the stairway that someone has entered the room from the window. Oh, uh, God, let's just get out of here. Is that, are they, oh, fuck, I don't know if they're friendly. Uh, can I try to shoot the lock on the door that's barring us from leaving? Absolutely, act under pressure. Uh, and Becky will hear a loud gunfire a second later. It's nine, ten. Uh, ten. Yep. You you do what you set out to do. Uh, you blast the lock uh, uh, clean off its uh, its you know hold there, 
uh, the bullet, you can hear like the pew, pew, as it uh, ricochets for a minute off of the metal and comes to a dead stop in the brick wall. And the door uh, doesn't fling open. You still have to open it, but the lock is broken. Uh, hey, uh, gun, gun guy, uh, one second before we go out this door. Uh, let me see your face. What? I'm going to turn to look at them uh, um, out of confusion. I'm going to say Rock Vorna. And I rolled a 10, so I'm going to heal you one harm that you took to your face. Hell oh, yeah. Thanks, thanks so much. What does the healing look like? Yeah, I think I, uh, as I say that, I uh, take some of the chemicals I had snorted and, like, flick it at him uh, <laughs> where his burn is. Nice. Uh, like a weird healing dragon, you blow some nice chemicals on his body, uh, and his, his face starts to regenerate. Uh, and you, uh, Beck and Flint, as you enter into the basement, you hear these weird sounds, you hear the gunfire, you hear an arcane language. What do you do? Uh, rush towards it. Uh, at the at the top of the stairs, you see two people. The door open, a gun in hand, smoking, uh, and, and magic at play. You hear, <laughs> as uh, you start to uh, hear another pipe burst and water spew along the ground and little spindly hands start to rise from the water. What do you do? What's on the ceiling? Uh, like a classic concrete of a ceiling fan, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, like jump and maybe like, I mean, how tall is the ceiling? Uh, I would say it's about 10 feet off the ground. Okay. Uh, I, I want to try to find a way to like hold on to the ceiling so that my feet are on the ground where all the weird little grabby hands are. Okay, so you want to jump from like, uh, you could like climb up the piping on the side yeah. and, it'll be hot, and then jump to the ceiling fan and hold on. Yeah. Already act under pressure. Okay. Are you like pushing past us? Because we're on the store we're we're stairwell by the door, right? They, they drop a window. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, no. That's a three. <laughs> three on a, on a failure. Things go to hell. Oh. As you uh, leap up uh, from the, uh, 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 the, the pipes towards the ceiling fan, the ceiling fan turns on. <laughs> and as it starts spinning and you get your hands on it, it throws you into the wall and you slam hard and drop down into the water. Uh, you take a, a, a harm from this situation as you fall onto this puddle, and these little, like, black seaweed-like hands hold onto your, your biceps, and you can feel a weight on you. And uh, the magic in your vision picks up that a creature has landed on your chest. You are in danger. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna look at the guy next to me and be like, is that a friend of yours? No, but they seem to be a person, so I'm gonna run and try to use power of the heart to help get this thing off. I'm imagining. Yeah, what? What the fuck is going on? Uh, beautiful. Power of heart just gives you a plus one to uh, the help it action. Right? You automatically have a yeah, yeah. So, so someone else has to do something. I'm and gonna the power use. Of heart will kick in. I'm gonna use protect someone to try to help Beck. And then your power of heart would be able to kick in to help me with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Go ahead and roll tough. Well, it would be... Oh, uh, it would be a seven with power of heart, it becomes an eight. All right. I mean, yeah, it's the same effect. On a, on a seven plus, you protect them okay, but you'll suffer some or all of the harm uh, they were going to get. Uh, so I think what happens right now is that uh, Beck is currently restrained, is the, the harm instead. And you will accept the, the one harm poison that the uh, this creature, which is called a, a water leaper for our purposes, uh, as it stings you in the side of the leg. What are you are, doing to help to protect Beck? Uh, I am pulling it off of Beck, and I am just like going. If I see it about to like sting her or something, I am going to grab the creature and just accept whatever sting I get, just getting it away from her. Yeah, for sure. You, you take the, the one-harm poison uh, as it uh, sits in you. 
and you can feel yourself like weaken slightly uh, as it kind of as it courses through your body, and you have minus one forward on your next roll. All right, uh, I will take that minus one forward to try to glean some information from the monster now that I have it. It's yeah, it's totally in your hands. You can ask an investigative mystery question if you want. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, it, I would say that at this point, it become it has become visible to you. It's in your body a little bit. Uh, and uh, do you need the description again of what it looks like? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Imagine a weird mix between uh, a bat and a frog forming a wyvern. Uh, like it has a big frog body and head with long vampire-like tusks. It has Its front arms are like bat wings and its back legs are a frog. It has also like a spined tail on its back. Hey, Lee, just for our uh, listeners or whatever, uh, what's the origin of this mythos? Uh, It is uh, from Welsh folklore. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's like a little goblin that helps out uh, the big monster, which I have not said its name yet. So (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, Okay, so I have this thing on me. Let me uh, investigate a mystery on it. Uh, That would be a third. But since it's at yeah, minus it's one, it's only twelve. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Whatever two. shall I do? Uh, what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What is it going to do? What is being concealed here? What is it going to do specifically? What it's going to do? Like, what's its goal? And uh, what's being concealed sure. here? Uh, here, let me let me answer the first question and see if that changes what your second question is. What was it going to do? The Water Leaper is a minion creature. It is the servant of a higher power. It is What it's going to do is whatever its bigger creature asks, uh, and based on uh, the things that it is collecting, and it has kind of revealed it from a marsupial pouch, uh, it has been uh, collecting supplies for its larger creature to, to watch over its prey, effectively. And the thing that it's been given is like blankets and toys. Uh, so what is it going to do? It's going to try and kill you guys and get out of here, or at least escape. Uh, and afterwards, serve its master in fostering a, this kid. Now that you've got a good read on it and seeing what it looks like, you know what water leapers do and it's this. Alright, and what were my options to ask again? What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What is being concealed here? And any of those questions can apply to other things. Uh, but it's just relevant to what you have at hand. Uh, so where, uh, would I be able to wait for it to take off, like, make it look like we're running away, and use the where did it go? Yeah, sure, if that happens, absolutely. All right, then I'm going to hold on to the where did it go, and I'm going to say, everyone, we need to run now. Okay. And I, uh, to, to maintain like a little bit of order here, I'm just going to go with the order we've going and we'll, we'll cycle through like it's an initiative. And so far we've had, uh, uh, Beck and, uh, Cassius, Flint, and now I think it's June's turn. Um, did I see Flint get poisoned? For sure. Okay. It looks not great. He's got like Um... black and bay next to his leg. Fuck. I'm going to try and use magic really subtly. Um, I figured Cassius saw me use it without realize, like me realizing it, so I didn't mind doing it in front of him. But mm-hmm. I don't know who the fuck Flint is, and to my knowledge, he hasn't seen me do anything like that yet. For sure. I am going to kind of like turn my back and try and cast a spell, and then... Uh, like, put my hand on him to, like, pull him away from the creature. Okay. Fuck yeah, 12. Awesome. What is your effect? Um, I want to cure him of a disease. Oh, or, or poison, yeah. Yeah, as under my breath as possible, I'm going to, uh, say, Oh, so, Balthazar's Krimja! And, uh, like, uh, like then, like cough, like, <laughs> and like put my hand on his shoulder and be like, "Hey, uh, yeah, like let's the door's up there, it's unlocked," and like start pulling him with me as I like go to run, and like the healing energy from my touch is going to go into him. 
We The camera pans quickly to Flint's leg as we see the blackened veins recede and a little bit of black sludge erupt from the, the stinger wound. Uh, as, and it's like a slow drain from his body. And uh, you don't have the poison tag anymore, Flint, which means I'm not going to keep hurting you with it. Awesome. <laughs> all right. <laughs> is, all that, all those cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beck, I believe it is your turn. There are weird uh, black watery hands around your biceps right now as you sit somewhat helplessly on the ground. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to struggle free. Uh, and I think I, I want to use... No, you know what? I'm not going to use magic because there are too many people around. I'm just going to try to struggle free. Uh, okay. I mean, this act under the pressure. Yeah. I imagine the Heart of Gold is a, like, once per round type thing, yeah? Yes, yeah, so you could use it now since it's a new round. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd love to. That was... I was in my mind, I was helping pull the thing off so it makes sense that it would help with both Flint and this. Yeah. Well, let's see what they rolled and if they need it or not. I got an 11. I mean, hey, right? It's still, yeah. it's still, still nice. Uh, but yeah, if you want to hold it, you can, so you can use it on someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Uh, absolutely. Uh, as this thing is, like, holding on to your biceps, you uh, struggle and jerk yourself free. With an 11, what do you do to get out? Are you, like, dislocating your arms or some weird shit, or are you brute strength? What do you got? Uh, I think uh, Beck falters for a moment, uh, like they're going to give up, uh, and then they just brute strength it out. I think there's, like, part of their brain that goes, Hulkamania! And they just bust out. <laughs> Fuck yes. I love it. Uh, as you hulk out of its arms, it, uh, it's, uh, it, like, slithers back into the water with a little blip, blip. Uh, and you can see in the reflection of the thing little, like, ghastly trees uh, as they as little autumn leaves fall against the water. There are no leaves in the room, which means on the other side of the sort of reflective surface, leaves are sitting. Mm. And it is uh, Flint's turn. Do I see those leaves also? Sure. Alright. I'm going to try to get every... I'm going to... Uh, just try to usher the rest of them out. Yeah, there's a monster in your hands, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw it at the other side of the room and run, because I'm trying to usher everyone away so I can fake where we're retreating so we can follow it. Very nice. Uh, act under pressure, I think. This is very simple here. You're just trying to avoid being harmed as you escape. All right, and one of my abilities allows me to roll my sharp for act under pressure instead Love of it. cool. Good thing, because it would have only been a 9 if it was uh, my cool, but with sharp, it's a 10. Beautiful. Uh, you definitely toss the creature away as it's attempting to sting you like a stingray, uh, and it, it collapses on some of the, the broken pipes in the room. The room is crazy hot right now. I don't think enough to harm you yet, but if you're here a second longer, it will be. This is the steam fills the room. You are sweating buckets, and you charge up the stairs. Uh, Cassius, your turn. Uh... I would like to use Let's Get Out of Here to protect uh, Beck as we, as I lead her out of the basement, if possible. Uh, okay. What is the what is protect? What does that say? Uh, if you can protect someone by telling them what to do or by leading them out, roll charm instead of. Death. Oh, nice. I like that. Okay, go for it. Eleven. Eleven. Uh... Choose an extra. You suffer little harm. All impending danger is focused on you. You inflict harm on the enemy, or you hold the enemy back. Uh, whew. if I hold the enemy back, do I have to stay down in the basement? No. I'd like to hold the enemy back. What do you say to the creature to hold it back? Uh, this is like you're talking, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna shout. Uh, let's run out the window and then grab back and run up the stairs. <laughs> 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 Flynn follows your instructions and runs for the window. No, I'm kidding. Oh, no. you know, in a fit of cartoonish schemery, uh, <laughs> you, you juke the creature out as it uh, it is capable of making like these massive leaps, and it jumps towards the window, and you see its singer smash through the glass, and you guys are getting up the stairs safely. <laughs> uh, June, what are you what are you up to? 
Uh, I'm like holding the door open. Like, come on, come on, come on. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, the the fire alarms have gone off. The sprinklers are on. So as you guys are getting out the top door, uh, you are uh, getting bombarded with water and and definitely soaked. But otherwise, for the time being, you're safe. What do you all do? Uh, I held that. Where did it go for there after is. the creature left? So we can follow it. Uh, I'm going to turn to the group and I'm going to go. Person with the gun. Badass with the nunchucks. Oh. I don't know what you do. <laughs> I let the creature get away so we can follow it because there's a missing kid. If you want to help, come with me. If you just want to get to safety, no hard feelings. Yeah, I mean, I think I was kind of wrong place, wrong time. I'm not a person with a gun or nunchucks or anything, but... Uh, I'm gonna hand yeah. them my, I have a pocket knife, and I'm gonna hand them the pocket knife and be like, we can do this. Let's get <laughs> that can, kid. You, you can hang on to that, man. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I think you and me are buddies now. Uh, we went through something down there. <laughs> it's very steamy down there. Very hot. <laughs> yeah, you guys are sweating and wet. All of you look terrible. My eyes are, like, super bloodshot from the drugs, too. Like, they look real oh. fucky. Uh, my skin's been thoroughly exfoliated, so <laughs> I may look like <laughs> shit, but I feel great. Beautiful. Yeah, this, this is, like, the closest to a shower Flint's had in a couple days. <laughs> no, he, sh he showers pretty regularly. He has, uh, he spends oh, $20 a month from his panhandling money for a gym membership. And, uh, <laughs> showers regularly. Also, that's, that's how he keeps it so tight. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs>